uh, with with apologies to Dr. Uh, Stephen Covey, who wrote the book, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Um, I thought I'd uh, do something similar uh, for EMC designs. And uh, so we're going to talk about, um, I think, the uh, what I believe are the seven most important designs, uh, design concepts that you can uh, add to your um, or incorporate into your product designs. We're going to um, first talk about PC boards because that really turns out to be the key factor in whether you're going to meet EMC, uh, either emissions or immunity standards. Uh, we'll talk about uh, how to identify uh, noisy en energy sources and how to partition um, the circuit sections on your circuit board to avoid cross-coupling uh, noisy to um, quiet circuits. We'll talk um, about filtering and where to locate your I.O. and power ports for lowest EMI. Talk about cable termination and pigtails, um, traces crossing gaps, um, grounding and signal returns, and finally, uh, local shielding and uh, something new that you may not um, have considered but that I'm starting to incorporate in uh, many of the RF or the Wi-Fi or uh, wireless designs is uh, the use of RF absorber. So we're going to be um, plugging right along here quickly. Uh, many of these topics have been covered in much more detail in other webinars or articles that I've written. And if you... Um, If you uh, simply do a search on um, uh, for, for my name and then EMC, you'll you'll see a lot of references. Um, and as far as circuit board design and stack up, there's a couple other there's a couple other uh, people I'd recommend: um, Rick Hartley and Dan Beaker, and um, so doing a search on those two uh, of my colleagues uh, should yield um, quite a lot more information on circuit boards. So let's dive in. Um, understanding how circuits, uh, or how signals propagate uh, will, will give you a real competitive advantage over your, your competitors. And so we want to cover this first. Um, so one thing to understand is that um, EMC designers is all about um, currents and where currents are flowing. Uh, as, as a digital designer, you're more uh, interested in voltage levels, uh, highs and lows. And... Um, so uh, for, for a good EMC design, you really want to consider currents and how currents flow, because if we interrupt that flow current, uh, you're going to end up with uh, EMC issues. So here's, here's the first thing to understand, and that is uh, when you have a source here uh, and a load, um, you've got... Um, currents traveling on the uh, on the trace here, but the return currents at low frequency tend to spread out quite a lot. And uh, that's where we can get into trouble uh, at low frequencies is if you have uh, a very close high speed trace sharing that same return path, uh, you, then you're going to get cross-coupling between noisy and quiet circuits. Um, fortunately, at, at, at frequencies greater than, um, than 100 kilohertz, um, the return currents travel um, essentially underneath the circuit trace. 
Now, the other, the other thing to consider is that uh, circuit board traces are actually transmission lines, uh, especially if you're dealing with uh, frequencies of 100 kilohertz or higher, and most of us are in that realm. Um, so we have a circuit's point of view where signals and power require a return path back to the source, and this return path needs to be uninterrupted. And uh, so we'll talk about that coming up. Uh, there's also the field's point of view, and, and this is the important concept to understand, and that is that uh, signal and power transient fields travel, are electro, uh, actually electromagnetic waves that travel in the dielectric space at near light speed, while the conduction and displacement currents simultaneously flow back to the source at uh, very, very slow uh, velocity, called the drift velocity. It's much less than uh, one millimeter per second. So it's not the um, electrons in copper that's, that's your signal. The signal is actually the electromagnetic wave that's trapped between the circuit trace and the return plane. And that is a really key concept to understand. Um, we'll start out with the concept of displacement current. Um, capacitors are really energy storage devices, and uh, that energy is stored as a voltage across the plates. If we close the switch here, uh, we're going to get, um, for example, plus ch charges on one side, which are going to repel any plus charges on the other. Uh, giving us with minus charges, leaving us with minus charges. And if this um, uh, goes to an AC source or a high frequency source, now it's going to look like uh, we get current flow through that dielectric. And it's, it's really the uh, transfer of energy from one side to the other. Uh, where this comes into play is uh, when we consider how a signal propagates on a microstrip. So, for example, we have, um, let's say we have a, a digital circuit going from high to a low uh, state. Um, and there's a, there's a transition region here where all the, uh, the magic um, uh, harmonic uh, harmonic uh, energy is generated, and this this is what um, what we EMC engineers deal with typically. So at this transition point, the the rise or fall time of of the digital signal, uh, that's where all the harmonic energy is is um, is, and um, this this edge is. Um, represented by the, the uh, red and blue arrows. This is the current flow from the source back to um, where it started. So that's the conduct conducted and displacement currents, and those are flowing very slowly. However, when this wave front is rapidly um, uh, transitioning along the transmission line from, uh, say, point A to point B, um, that that represents this this leading edge here moving over to this point. Um, so this this is actually uh, an electromagnetic. Uh, field in in the dielectric space here, and uh, in FR four it is uh, moving at roughly six inches per nanosecond. The important point is that we need to keep this electromagnetic wave captured uh, between the copper trace.